up guys this is Donuts Movies and welcome to the World of Warcraft lore Q&A number 65. The question for today's video is by Byron and he asks what do you think Vratian is doing as in war crimes he helps Garrosh escape and according to one of the in-game mini stories he passed through Admiral Taylor's garrison. Also at the end of Mr. of Pandaria legendary quest line he kinda goes a bit mad and explains how he supported a site he thought he had the highest chances of success. Basically he switched from the Alliance to Horde. What do you think? Now this is something that a lot of people have been asking me about and when I say a lot I really mean a lot because I've been getting questions daily through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube messages, YouTube comments. So I thought I would finally like do one big video and compile the entire thing because I've been kinda answering segments about Vratian through the Q&As but I thought I would finally do one video and the main reason why I didn't really feel like talking about Vratian in like a big video was because I can't really see the future, I don't really know what's gonna happen, I can only give the information that we have and just to say we have very very little information about Vratian and the only thing I can really do is just get you up to speed and give you a few of my own speculations but I'm not like working for Blizzard, I'm not like one of their writers so I can't really give you a concrete answer. Now I'm not really going to go too much into his lore, I'm not really going to go deep and tell you like who is Vratian all the way from Cataclysm because you obviously know about Vratian, I mean you obviously click this video, like this isn't even a lore lesson, this is like a speculation video about Vratian, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail but I'll just give you a short summary. So Vratian is pretty much the last black dragon or at least he is considered to be the last free black dragon and he is considered to be the son of Deathwing and just to clear out the very very common misconception when I say that he is the son of Deathwing and when Blizzard says in the quest lines I don't really think they mean that like he's directly the son of Deathwing I think he's just one of his brood he isn't like Nefarian or Onyxia he is just one of the black dragons although he might be a bit closer to Deathwing but he's not really that close to Deathwing he somehow mysteriously managed to free himself from the old god curse and he is considered to be the only like free black dragon and Vratian has just been a key character since Myths of Pandaria and I don't just think I know that he will play a big role in World of Warcraft in the future as Blizzard has just been building him up so much throughout pretty much Mists of Pandaria, it's been like 2012 so it's been like 3 years since, well they introduced him a bit before but it's been 3 years since they have been actively building up Vratian so I think he will really play a big part, I mean he was in the legendary quest, he was in the other quests and the book like war crimes and all the different hints spread throughout all the Warcraft universe. Now I really think that Vratian knows something that we don't or at least not yet so I think he will play a really big role. Now my personal speculation is that his big vision is the final invasion of the Burning Legion where Sargeras will show up in person and there will be like a battle between the light and the dark which are the two main energies in the world or at least the entire universe and possibly even the old gods could be somehow involved they might join the Burning Legion since they're very often related to the void which is counted as one of the sources of the shadow or the darkness now the entire light and the shadow are the crucial thing in the universe and even in one of the creation theories it is suggested that the universe was created when the two collided and there was like the balance between the two so there always has to be a balance between the light and the shadow and they're like the two main energies in the entire universe not just on the world of Draenor or Azeroth. Now recently in world of Draenor Blizzard has been giving out a lot of hints about the light through Velen and the Draenei but also a lot of hints about the void through the pale orcs, Cho'gal and the so-called Called Dark One, which is somehow a big part of World of Draenor, even though we literally don't know anything about the Dark One. So, in my opinion, I think they're slowly building something up, and I think that Vratian already knows about the thing they're building up, and that it will happen soon. And we currently like have no idea what's going on. Right now, Vratian is that mysterious character that seems like a hero, but he's also a villain at the same time. But I personally think that he's a very well-developed character. There's a lot of people that think that he sucks, there's a lot of people that think he's an amazing character, but I think Blizzard did a really good job with the entire Vratian persona. Now, at one point, Vratian looks like he wants to save the world, and that he wants for everyone to live a happily ever after, and that he's like this superhero, but on another look, he looks like he wants to destroy the world, and take it into the darkness, and be a ruler for himself. Now, I think that he's a really good character, although he might have some evil on the outside, although I think he's a really good character inside, in like the core of himself, and that his goal for Azeroth is a good goal, and that he wants for Azeroth to be a very peaceful place, and no wars 
wants to be there, but I think that he has a vision of the future and he knows that the dark times will come, so he has to be like super brutal and honest and give Ezra the best chance for survival, even if that means betraying the actual good guys who, in his eyes, seem so clueless about the entire grand scheme and they're only seeing the present, they don't really know what's going on in the big plan. So the question is, if Vretin really wants Ezra to be at this great place, what the hell is he doing on the alternate world of Draenor, like it makes no sense for him to be on the world of Draenor if his main goal is Ezra and the answer is, <laughs> we have like no clue about that and we can only speculate, but there is really no solid answer, so I'll just try to do my best and give you the entire story of Rhodes to Draenor. Now, what we do know is that he was behind our trip to Draenor, and that was explained in War Crimes, and he pretty much used Kairos Dormu, the bronze dragon, to fulfill his goal, but in the end it turns out that Kairos betrayed him and went on his own merry way and went on his own plans. Now we learn about this thing through the Negrand questline and the vision that happened between Kairos and Garrosh when you're pretty much level 100. Now we learn that Kairos used Garrosh to get to Draenor so that he can control the Iron Horde and then open countless alternate universe portals and control a huge amount of Iron Hordes in order to become a force of his own, most likely even stronger than Sargera so he would have like infinite amount of Iron Hordes. But in the end, Garrosh was not just a peon in his plan and he stabbed him and pretty much ended his plan as soon as he got to the world of Jan. So what we do know is that Kairos had a mind of his own and that he went against Vratian and that he ended his life pretty quickly. But the question is, what was Vratian's agenda and what did he have out of the entire Iron Horde thing? Now, there are a few different theories, but none of them are really confirmed, but I'll just give you my own opinions on that. So, some would say that Vratian wanted the Anhort to join us against the Dark in the final battle that he's been talking about, while others would say that he would actually want them to invade Azeroth so that they can face the combined forces of the mortals from Azeroth, because he knew that the original Horde was very strong and that they would have won the war against the humans and might have even taken the entire world if Gul'dan didn't betray them in the second war. So the Iron Horde invasion of Azeroth was pretty much a win-win situation when you look at it in that way for Vratian, because if we faced the Iron Horde and we won, he would know that we would be strong enough to face the Dark, while if we were completely destroyed, the Iron Horde would take over the world and they might have a better chance against the Dark in the final battle, so he would kinda win either way, so I think this theory kinda makes sense, although as I said nothing is really confirmed. Now through this theory you can kinda see what I meant before when I said he's kinda good but he's evil at the same time, because you can see through this that he doesn't really care about us, he, like, he doesn't really care about the mortals, it's like kinda a win for him if we get destroyed and it's a win for him if we destroy them and he only kind of cares about the world of Azeroth and the one who is strong enough to protect it so he's kind of looking at the bigger plan and he doesn't really care about the people that are kind of living the life on the world of Azeroth. Now there is also a speculation that Vratian wasn't dumb enough to be outsmarted by Kairos so that he actually outsmarted Kairos himself by having a deal like a secret deal with Garrosh. So Kairos was just used as a tool and when Garrosh would get to the world of Janor he would be of no use and thus Kairos would be killed which actually happened in the entire questline which would kind of leave a little bit of a space for us to think that Vratian might already saw through this and he kind of saw the betrayal coming and he betrayed Kairos first before he could betray him. But all of these different speculations that I just said are mainly on his grand scheme, but your question was mainly about his whereabouts and about that we <laughs> know even less. Like I believe it was confirmed at Blizzard before World of Draenor came out that he might have a small appearance of World of Draenor but he won't have any significant role which so far was the case, so it kinda makes some sense. Now the only real part in World of Sardinian where he is mentioned is in the super mysterious Admiral Taylor's garrison, which in a sense is a ghost town and no one really knows what happened there. There's all these speculations going around, but no one really knows for sure what's going on. Although we do learn that Vratian visited it earlier, and he says to Taylor that he pissed off some of the ogres and because of that he needed a place to stay. Now Vratian then told Taylor to keep an eye out on one of the residents called Ephile and that he's a very suspicious man and he is probably up to something. 
Now Taylor knew about Fratian, like what he did in the entire garage thing, so he kept him kind of as a prisoner, although kind of like a prisoner, but I guess at the same time, and he was under surveillance by his guards, because he knew he was a really mysterious guy and he might have something under his sleeve. So at some point he had to leave for Nagrand and he offered the guards that were watching Vratian an extra pay if they would keep a 24 hour watch on Vratian, but little did he know <laughs> is that Vratian actually paid those guards to watch Taylor, so that is the entire plot twist there. Now, once Taylor returned like a week later, he discovered that Vratian was gone and that the file guy has made a chaos in his garrison and later on once we showed up to the garrison, we discovered that Taylor was also killed and that all of the residents are ghosts and that the file turned out to be a necromancer serving the Dark One which I mentioned earlier, which is a huge mystery of its own and you should kinda check out my old gods on Draenor video if you want to learn more about that, but as I said we don't really know anything about the Dark One and there is just still wild speculation. Now some people are suggesting that the file might be killed to Zad because he's like a necromancer and we know that he to Zad didn't die so he might make like a reappearance, but that is mainly a wild speculation, there is like no proof of that, we only think that because he kinda looks like Yelto Zad with the entire model. Now what is really mysterious here is the disappearance of Ratian. like how did he know about the file and was he behind the thing or was he just caught in the entire thing with the file and until Blizzard really mentions Ratian again I don't think we will ever find out because there is so little information as I said earlier in the video. But before that we might have a small hint about Ratian and his place on Draenor, he says that he pissed off the ogres but he really never said why did he piss the ogres, how did he piss the ogres, how did he even meet the ogres and what we know about the ogres is that they have been digging up these titanic artifacts in search for power and we're kinda like 99% sure that the titans visited Draenor because they mentioned the creators in the short story you know, about the ogres and we also have these different artifacts of titanic origin and the vaults of the titans so we kinda know that the ogres are somehow related to the titans and that they're digging up these titanic artifacts so it is suggested that Fratian doesn't really have any like like big task on Draenor, like he has an Ezroth where he's like a key character and that he might only be on Draenor to learn more about the titans or absorb some of the titanic powers in order to become more powerful or take them to Ezroth that he can use for some super mysterious thing. Another thing related to that is that he might know about the Dark One pretty much everyone is talking about that we have no clue about and that is why he knew about the file that he is also related to the Dark One and I don't really think he's working for the Dark One but he might just be intrigued by the notion and he might want to learn more about the Dark Powers that we might face at some point on the world of Azeroth. But as I said in the beginning of the video, I can't <laughs> give you any answers about this, only thing I can do is just give you speculations and some of the small facts that we have throughout all these different hints. But one thing is always certain and consistent and that is that Fratian knows about the future for some reason and that he can see the bigger picture in the Warcraft universe while all of us are kinda living in the moment and all of these different wars, battles, quest lines and all of the things we go through are just a small part of the puzzle that kind of Bratian is putting together so he's kind of seeing the bigger picture. So do leave your thoughts on what you think about Bratian, his grand scheme and what he's doing on Draenor as I'm really interested in hearing about this and I'm not just saying that like a lot of people do like I really want to hear your opinions just so I can get comments in the video. I genuinely care about your opinions on Bratian which is why I read all of the comments and try to reply to as many as I can. So do leave your own suggestions on what you think about Bratian and what is he doing on the world of Draenor. Also don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel already as it really helps out the channel and keeps all these videos going and thanks a lot for taking your time out of the day to watch this video and see you next time.